<laughs> and celebrity, all the way from San Mar, we have Carolyn Long, who has an absolute passion and love of orchids, growing orchids. And uh, Carolyn has brought her husband Jack with her. They together are a really phenomenal team in uh, certainly in producing the videos and in just enjoying growing the orchids here. So, thank Carolyn. you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, there's a little photo album that can be passed around. All the pictures of the orchids in there were taken last week oh, and wow. have been in flower since December. Oh, so, um, and some are, I have a little mark on. Some are old, some are newer. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get started. I'm going to repot an orchid right now, how I do it. And there's many ways to grow orchids, and they uh, all have their uh, good points. Uh, but for the average person, like I am, this is how I suggest it be done. And uh, so I have an orchid that I purchased at Save On, right here, and there's a little slip. And usually, as soon as I buy my orchid, I come home, I go and get some bark, and I soak it. And I soak it 24 hours, and the next day, blossoms or no blossoms, I repot it right oh, away. Wow. Now, some people, in fact, most of the people on the internet say, don't repot it when it's in bloom. But, right here, from the Oregon Orchid Society. They say quite the opposite. Anybody who wants to look at this article later, it'll be here. They say that is very true. Maybe if you're buying it from an orchid grower or someone that really knows their orchids, but if you're buying it from the grocery store, they say to repot it as soon as possible because they, uh, um, you can grow in moss, but when they have the ones from the grocery store, they pack them so thick, and that bark has been around them so for such a long time, and they're an air plant. They, in, they don't live in a tight pot with moss all packed around. They live in a tree growing loose, and that's how they live. So. They are not meant to live like that, but we're going to repot this one, and I'll show you what I do. It is pretty snug. Just before I left, I soaked it in a little water. It's absorbed it all. There's none left in there, but I poured some water in there. And uh, so that's what I do. And I don't take these out, the little stakes that hold the flowers, and I've repotted a lot of orchids. And I've never, I've lost a couple buds, but most of the time, this one was repotted two weeks ago, didn't lose any blossoms. And I usually don't, and I usually show the next video after I've repotted, and no buds have fallen, and, and uh, no blossoms I've lost. So what you do is you just, ASP, this is what I say, you take, um, the moss out. And you'll find the outside, the healthiest part of your orchid is growing along the outside of the pot because they like the light and they're turning green from the light and the moisture. But here lies the problem when they're left in the grocery store too long. And when you're picking out your orchid, <laughs> It's kind of like if you're looking for a man, don't pick the good looking one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's more important is, is you want strong leaves. You want a good foundation. If you don't have a good foundation, then what's above. These flowers can survive the worst circumstances. So once you get into the center of your orchid, you'll find that's where your trouble starts. Mm -hmm. And even though you might look at them in the store and you say, well, it looks really good and I don't have to pot it right away, 
but the bad things that are happening are happening right in the center, and they can just rot away on you. They're, so it, it's very tight in here. And when, when you do one, if it sat around too long, I asked them, I've, I kept this one a week, I never did it because I knew I had to do this, and I made sure I was down there the day they arrived. <laughs> I asked them, I says, when are they coming? He said, Friday, we were down there Saturday morning. And I picked this one out, and I knew not to water it too much, but if you purchase it, and it's in moss, and you water it too much, you're going to kill it. You see, already you start to notice a musty smell. So lots of people can keep them doing good in moss if they just water them sparingly, but moss will go quite acetic, and it'll go acetic come within a year, and it should be repotted every year. Once you've got them used to bark, and sometimes they do take a shock, but once you've got them used to bark, some of these can stay in here. It's just bark with a bit of charcoal, and I may not have to repot it for three, four years, the bigger pots. Because I use also uh, quite large, coarse bark, fur bark. So we're just about, then I usually pick all this out the center, and then sometimes, You'll see, like, the green vellum is what absorbs the moisture and feeds the plant. But if it's in sogginess, there's a rotten root, see? The vellum has rotted from being in the moss too long, and this is the inner core that takes the strength to the orchid. So what I do is I brought my pruners, but um, if you're pulling on it and it's rotten, it'll just leave... I, I sometimes leave the inner core. I found, see now here's a really rotten one. Mm -hmm. And this is why you do it right away because what happens is it just continues to rot. So I bought my pruners and I rubbed them with rubbing alcohol and put them under the flame of my gas stoves so that I don't pass on any diseases. So. This is the problem, this is where they go rotten the quickest, and of course the center is attached to the monopodial stem, and so that rot is just going to go straight up, and it, it, these flowers could look beautiful, but it's what's down here. So when I go looking for an orchid, and you can see by this one, I look for nice firm leaves, nice firm leaves, and lots of aerial roots. Because if the roots are really bad, these aerial roots, if you miss them every day, will keep the plant alive while it grows new healthy roots in the soil. Now some people also say it should go in a small pot, not much different than the one that it's bought in. But um, as you see, I have huge pots. Big pots, I found, what happens if you put them in a big pot? They spend a lot of time growing roots inside. But it's just making them healthier, because then when they start to flower and blossom, you've got a really, really healthy plant coming. So um, we're just about ready to put this in the pot. So that's what I look for. I wasn't... There was some, I maybe like the color of the flower better, but I looked for um, all those important signs. So here we are. I'm just going to rinse it off a little bit. Now, how you tell a so uh, if a root is soft and mushy, it has to be come off. Now, I'm down, these roots are okay, and they're white, but they, they're, they can be white because they haven't been getting any, only the ones that are getting air, on the light on the outside will be green, that are near the outside of the plastic pot. I don't use these, I throw them away. I've had roots growing out of those splits, and it's actually cut them off, and uh, I don't like them. So, now, I've just got a bucket of water here, and I'll give it a little rinse. Now, lots of people watch my channel, and some of them are in places, and they see me running my tap, and they're going, oh, the water, the water. <laughs> so I try to explain, but you know, there's lots of places that 
They, they have to just have a little bit of water and they can't run water. We're so lucky here. That's what I say. So, that's how easy it is. And there's our, how much moss was in one poor little pot. This pot, this much moss. No, not good. <laughs> so, and they do it for um, just the purpose of them lasting from the greenhouses here, and that's why they do it. And they don't use the best quality moss either. So I'm going to put it in this nice pot. Most of these pots, I'm a real thrift store, yay, Seven Arms thrift store. <laughs> You'll probably see me there, but most of my pots have come from there, and you only pay a dollar or two. And uh, this pot here, this was in our greenhouse, we had a, a, a heater, a long, narrow heater, and this was the base upside down, and it broke. And uh, Jack doesn't, he doesn't waste anything. So he comes up, and he shows me this before he put the holes in it, and he says, um, wouldn't this make a nice orchid pot? <laughs> and, and I said, yeah, it would. So he, off he went, and he drilled holes, and, and I says, well, I'll look for something to a stand to hold it, because we have used fondue pot metal things you'll see in our photo album there of one, and we've used all kinds of things. So anyway, I thought, well, I'll look for something. But he was downstairs, because we we do chicken wire uh, statues and people, and and we use the same wire. It's called the... Uh, um, well, that's... It's called... Uh, bob wire drops. Bob wire something. drops. It's mm. only like a dollar for a strand four feet tall that's double. Three feet. And so he had wound them all into this thing. He says, look, the aerial roots can come out and, and it'll be decorative. And so here's one coming out already. <laughs> so there was our pot. And then I did a dirty pour. I, it, I looked up in the art world, they do this dirty pour now. So I did a dirty pour <laughs> for the paint job. So now I'm going to put this in. Now some people, I love aerial roots. Now some people don't. And if you don't like them, don't cut them off. Try and just... Can we ask a quick question? Yeah. It's a silly one. Can you divide that into two plants? No. Have, okay, wow. No, it is. Uh, uh, these uh, Phalaenopsis orchids are a monopodial one stem. And in like our care, if we're really lucky, like in the forest, in the jungle, they could live for 25, 50 years or something. But uh, for us in our house, I think if they last 10 to 15 years, we're doing good. Mine, I, the oldest one, I think is about six years. I have flowers every year, every so I, winter. So once you have a plant, you never divide it. You never divide it. Okay. Not a phalaenopsis. Others, yes. Other orchids, yes. Okay, you, you lost me, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, usually when you're doing this bark, don't um, use your bare hands, put gloves on. Uh, I'm bad. <laughs> so what you do then is just take your bark that's been soaking for 24 hours, and I also have a teeny little bit of charcoal that I usually sprinkle in. That is all I put in my pot. And I squeeze the little bark pieces down because there's always a little hole in the center of your plant. Now I run, because you're, you're using bark, I always run on the dry side. So with beginner orchid people, they say the quickest way they usually kill their orchids is by overwatering. But with bark, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. Now. Um, in the winter, I water the big pots once a week. The little pots, I found, they need a little bit. I always take them and really put lots of water through them. Or you could soak them in a, put water in a pot, soak them for 10 minutes, take them out. 10 minutes should be about max. What kind of mulch should you say you use? This is just a, a, a fur bark. 
I got it from the Hannahs when they were selling out. They had this great big bag because I started out using Schultz's and, and the orchid bark at Canadian Tire South. I did perfectly fine. The only reason I changed to the straight bark was because quite often in those bought bags, you find if you shake it around, there's a lot of little stuff that they add. And it will settle in one spot and then that's where your plant will water like. So I was starting to separate my bark from all the other stuff in the bag. And I'd put it in the bark, and then I'd put a little sprinkle of the other stuff, and then I went just to bark. And I have been really happy with it. And like I say, you're not going to, what you want is a pot with lots of holes. I love lots of holes. I don't care if the roots grow out. This one has some growing out. The front. Um, this is when it, it's really healthy. The leaves, this one I've had a few years, the leaves are firm and hard, and as soon as it's warm enough, it goes out on the patio. And it needs to, to force it into bloom, it needs about two to four weeks of about 10 degree cooler evenings than it's getting in the house. So when it's warm enough, I'll put it out there for a month, and I'll let it get cool, I'll bring it in, and then all my orchids go on the patio for the summer, and that one will come in, and then it'll flower, because they need a temperature difference. And if you don't have a, a fenced-in patio or something, you could put it on a windowsill and open the window so it's getting a cooler draft in the evening for two to four weeks. Some people, if they have a cooler room, as long as it's still getting some light, then they will uh, put it in the cooler room. But it, yeah, most of them, not all of them, uh, like a cooling off. And in the big greenhouses, I think they use uh, air conditioners and things for, and then they force the blooms. So um, <coughs> there we are. That's how simple it is. So and could you tell us when you put it out? Okay, um, all my orchids, Jack made me a really nice, um, uh, it's a, just shelves, you can make shelves of anything. And then over the top we put some shade cloth, just over the top. Our sunroom is all glassed in. It has a glass roof. And as you know, last summer was over 100 degrees, lots of days. And in the sunroom, it was hot. Now, all my orchids spent all summer out there. I take them out just outside the door, hose them down with the hose, and take them back. And I only had to water them twice a week in the summer, but I water them good. Not just a little dribble and not a nice cute. Everywhere it tells you, the Orchid Society will tell you, not an ice cube. It's a sales gimmick, and it's not really the best thing to do because you can actually freeze those roots that are on the surface with an ice cube. And, uh, and they're not supposed to be frozen. <laughs> Is an eastern window good or a southern yeah. window? Okay, I have um, two garden bay windows west. Very hot, but, too hot. I could never leave them there for the summer. Mm -hmm. So we did put a drop down shelf just on the side of our window, uh, just with three shelf holders and a sheet of glass. And so I could move them in, pull my blinds down, and I can do that. But I put them out for the summer. They go on holiday, they love it. I, I, in all that heat, but Not the shelf, the shelf in the sunroom is on the east window. Yeah, uh, the shelf in the sunroom is on the east window. Yeah. Yes, yes. Can you buy pots with holes in like that? You can. You can. This is actually this isn't one we made. This is one that um, it's a very old old pot that I found at the thrift store. Now everybody's going to be shopping there and won't find it. <laughs> <laughs> we do anyway. <laughs> So, uh, it's the busiest store in town. It is. <laughs> so, yeah, the more holes, the better. But um, I was in uh, Buckerfields. They sell orchid pots like this one for about $20, I think. I picked most of these up for two. This one here, this, of course, is a sewer pipe. 
And uh, we've got two of these. One at home is a triple. I, I'm not a sewer person, but <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jack picked it up and we tried it. And you know, they have been in here a year. They love it and they both flowered for the whole winter. This is the last flower, but they've been flowering since yeah. December. So much for the theory, though, that you can't put them together. Yeah, yeah, lots of times they say don't put them together. They love it. And a lot of people online, they have trouble with minis. These are mini orchids. There's the purple, purple. They are healthy. Look at the roots growing and the leaves are nice and firm. But sometimes you'll get one that, that does have a bit of a wimpy leaf. And, and uh, it goes into a little more shock. If you have to start cutting a lot of roots off your orchid, the more shock will come. But then what happens if, if you noticed you have had a bad one, don't put it in a lot of light. Put it in a little shadier light spot. And it will, um, I, the ones that I'm encouraging more leaf growth, I make sure uh, fertilizing, I use, um, a uh, higher first number of the nitrogen to encourage it. But you can use it because also when you're growing in bark, the little microorganisms that live in the bark that actually break the bark down, they live on the nitrogen. So not leaving much for your plant. Mm -hmm. So I fertilize and what I do is in my kitchen in the winter, I fill up the sink and I have Schultz liquid fertilizer, and I have two types. I have one with the high nitrogen. I also have one with the high middle number, which I use for ones that I want to keep flowering. And some people, <laughs> some people say, well, don't flower, fertilize them when they're in flower. They just keep flowering if you fertilize them. They like it. I never had any trouble. So. There's a lot of different stories. There's people that do so many different ways. And I started my, my YouTube channel because I just wanted to, to share that. I haven't public speak since junior high. <laughs> you did a great job. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the bark needs, and I fertilize them. Um, they say weekly, weekly. The best information I've ever found is still with the orchid societies. I read blogs. I, I go on to lots of other channels, but I like reading the orchid society blog. Their information is very good, and uh, and I there's there one that's my stand to if I want to look something up. I usually go to them. <coughs> so uh, I think that's the the easiest way, <coughs> and you can't. As long as you have lots of holes, you cannot overwater it. Because the water, as soon as I watered it, I soak this now in the sink. Okay, I got my sink full. I put in one drop in my whole full sink uh, full of water. One drop in the water. That's all very weak. Uh, the Orchid Society says weekly, weekly. Mm. So, and from that weekly, weekly, you can miss one watering a month and not fertilize and just flush it through. That flushes all the salts and debris out and you've got a nice fresh pot again and then you continue on with what you're doing. But when you have lots of holes, the more holes the better. That water just runs right through. It's had its soak for 10 minutes. Sometimes I'm busy in the house, I put maybe four or five pots in my sink, I set my timer and I run off and do something <laughs> till it rings and I come back and they're done, put on the drain rack and and also, oh yeah, I think in my little book that's going around, you'll see some humidity bowls because we make our own. We take old punch bowls from the thrift store <laughs> and, and Jack drills a half inch hole down low on the bowl and then I look for these, um, I should have brought one, but all the time in the thrift store you see these tea light holders, there's a, a square piece of glass on the outside and there's a little tea light for a candle on the inside and they're together and they fit those little misters, fogger misters 
just beautifully. So we make our own bowl, and he drills a hole, and the fogger mister goes through that hole, and it has a little rubber plug when you order it, goes in the hole, water doesn't leak out. Then I take the little tea light stand, put the mister in, and then I take a saucer, and it sits just beautifully on top of the tea light stand, and then when the fogger mister is going, if I, I, I call it my nursing station, I have one on the kitchen counter. I take my new plant, I've just repotted, and I sit it on top. So it has mist all around, it, just like if it was in the jungle. And uh, I have two in my kitchen window, and I have one in my living room window with also a um, fountain there. And I found it's really good for the, for the humidity in your house. It stops you from drying out and catching so many colds. It's, uh, um, I get um, mine from House Hydro because if you've ever had one of those misters in those shallow bowls, they're, they're really a lot of work. But if you get a deep bowl and make your own, you don't have to worry about always filling it up. It works better. And uh, it's, it, I've been using mine for years. I, they send you with your fog or mister, they send you three spare discs to put, I haven't used any of my spare discs. And I put them on when I get up in the morning and they stay on until after supper, every day. So um, we've made all of those. Um, <laughs> Once in a while we find one at the thrift store and we got one with some lights the other day and <laughs> that was nice. So I found it at, makes a difference on the window where I keep them of about, uh, the humidity might be about 10, 10 degrees higher around the misters than in the rest of the house because I've checked it quite regularly. So that's why I use them. And uh, I always keep Mine are usually sitting on something, and then I have a bowl underneath with water. No pebbles, just water. I tried the pebble thing, but they get slimy and dirty, and I got tired of keeping them clean. I don't use any of those. <clears throat> just a bowl and a stand. And then if I water, <clears throat> excuse me, if I water these ones, the small ones only, if I think more than once a week, I want to give them a little bit more halfway through the week, I just take my watering can, give them a dribble, and let it drip down. Only once a week they go to the sink. <coughs> so I, I have an orchid at home that gets a yellow leaf every once in a while. Are you not supposed to take those off? <laughs> I know you have one there. Everything I else is beautiful. I let, mine, I let mine stay until oh. they come out. And when they're ready to come out, that's when I pull. take them. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't cut them because okay. then you're sort of asking for trouble. Mm -hmm. um, so I just leave them when it's a natural occurrence. Right. So when they're ready, they will. Um, they'll just come off. Okay. Thank you. So yes. Uh, I have uh, the tip of tongue leaves are brown. Is that from too much water or not enough? Oh, the tip. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I haven't had any leaf tips. What is yours in? Uh, is it in bark? One of those. Oh, so it's still in moss? You probably need to, you know what? I know people that have, they keep them perfectly going for years. But that, if you read, look at moss, you'll find out they're acetic. Let me just read this here. Um, the key to getting orchids to survive is to make them extremely happy as soon as possible. Repotting sooner rather than later is important to get the old, low-quality mix out of the picture. Use only high-quality potting media and choose the best possible mix for your growing <coughs> space and the type of orchid you have bought. Um, most orchid tutorials will instruct you to repot only after the orchid finishes blooming. This is not because it will harm the plant. 
if you repot while the blooms are still there, but because repotting will probably cause the blooms to drop. And the whole point of having an orchid is to have it bloom, right? But in the case of the grocery store orchid, you are suspect to potting mix, which is significantly de degraded, and you may consider repotting it as soon as you can get it home. Philanopsis, a very uh, variety of grocery stores, begin their growth while they are still in bloom, and this practice is probably especially wise. I haven't lost blooms. If you watch any of my orchids, I'll come back two weeks later. Oh, they're still in bloom. Oh, they're still in bloom. And I know some people do, but when you have a problem is when they've been in that moss and started to rot. This is the Oregon Orchid Society. Um, they have lots of information and they're very good. So they're one of my favorite ones that I go to. And some of these pots don't have a hole on the bottom. Oh, yes, they all have holes. No, not the one that I, I bought them in. Oh, like yours does? Oh, that's not good. Like this? Yeah. Oh, because they just, this was in this, right? Yeah. So when you buy it. And that's what they do so that they don't tip over. Oh. Oh. Jack's taken these and drilled holes in them. Oh. <laughs> well, it's a stuff. long process. There's a video on it, but he does it in the water with a battery-operated drill because you don't want to be electrocuting yourself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and and that's fine. You can keep them in there, but once they're in bark, <laughs> that would be better. But I like my open. I like. If the roots want to come out, I let them. And uh, sometimes you'll find they've cut them off. Some of this one had some cut off. Um, I hate that. I like to see them. And if you don't like them sticking out, as they're starting to come, you can tuck them around the edge, the outside of the pot. But the reason they cut them off is because they're growing them in mass production, and they get all tangled. They're just, you know, but they're important. They can carry a lot of nutrition to the healthier plant. And when you don't have any roots under the, under the surface, these are what will save you. Well, it's an air plant. Yeah, yeah. You know. Do you have all the same type of orchids, or do you have different types? I have mostly Phalaenopsis. My daughter bought the first one for me. And then it grew, and now I'm an orchidaholic. <laughs> I have um, two small dendrobiums that I got a year ago, and two cymbidiums, and I just got an order of two slipper orchids, which I'm really excited about. So, I mean, we're going to have to make, everybody's downsizing at our age, and I'm like, oh, we're going to need another room on the house. <laughs> Is there an optimal light for a, for a plant? Like you said, I know there's a cooling yeah, off period. Yeah, uh, they call it candle lights, but if you were to hold um, your hand up, your, your, there's your window, the right. sun's shining, you held your hand and you get a bit of a shadow, that's probably right. And, but if that starts to feel hot when you feel by your window where the mm -hmm. sun's coming in, it's then you have to back them off yeah. to the shelf. Or some people put a little curtain all yeah. around the outside. So um, I have my curtains on the outside because I didn't know I was going to get into this. So now we put that shelf. So the ones that are inside in the summer, I can put on the shelf. And uh, then they don't get too much. Because what they should be in, um, a nice, if they're too dark green, they're probably not getting enough light. And if they're too light, they're probably uh, need some more light. So. Hmm. Um, I haven't you, had any trouble with When light. did you say you started doing the 10 degree cold? <clears throat> like when do you, like now would be a time to get, because it's going to have hot summer days to get it to bloom? Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting because um, they don't like to go below, say, 48 mm -hmm. at night. Mm -hmm. So I have to Still wait until my evenings I know are going to be around 50. Because it can heat up as much as it wants, and as long as they're not getting that hot Dress. sun directly on them. I mean, if they survived last summer, yeah, <laughs> anything happens. Yeah. But our sunroom doesn't get direct sun. 
Yes. It's, it's uh, in the right position. Then. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question? Yes. Uh, what was the benefit of adding the charcoal? The charcoal is a soil sweetener, and actually it's not necessary because my bark is quite big, because if you've got a spot in your, your pot that seems to be holding a lot of water, then it will stop it from uh, going smelly and not good. So uh, I just put a little bit in. <laughs> I a bought a bit. Is there a pH that they prefer? Oh, probably, but I have no idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Uh, I just uh, found a way that works, and I know it works. And. Uh, I say repot as soon as possible, and it takes them a while to adjust, some of them, but boy, oh boy, once they start coming, oh, <laughs> as so, you can see by the photo album. <laughs> so they, do they bloom twice a year for you? Uh, some of them will uh, keep blooming, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and not necessarily twice a year, some of them will, well, the ones that started blooming at Christmas, they started spiking, they had a couple. I got my oldest one at home right now. It uh, had seven flowers and now it's just put out another seven on the same spike. So I didn't want to bring it because it's in bud. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's going to be like 14 flowers. This has been since December. Mm -hmm. So it can flower till next, the end of next month. Mm -hmm. So then I will let it rest. Mm -hmm. And I probably won't let it flower again until um, next winter. What do you do for rest then? Rest is going out in the patio. <laughs> That's so the best. So light, not yeah. but cool, darker. It's hotter, it's cooler at night, it's okay. just, they do need a sort of time to, to catch up. They, yeah. they, uh, they will grow roots, they will grow leaves during this time. Okay. So, um, Can you tell me if you cut the flower stalks off and it's really Okay, cut. I know, yes. Um, if your plant is looking really healthy like this and the leaves are nice and firm, you could just cut it from, um, say, uh, one node down. That's what I did with this one. Um, this one I've had about five years or something, but I cut it part way down, just above a node on, on a slant because you'll get quite often a flower, but it decided to give me a baby kaiki. So now I have a new plant that's been there a couple years now, and I'll be able to cut it off and pot it, and I have one just like the mother. So if your plant is healthy, I would do that. If your plant is showing any signs of uh, lint leaves, like this one I've left in bloom, um, it's perking up now, but originally, when I got it, the leaves were the first leaves. These ones here were a little limp, and I let it rest. And now it came back and it flowered. So um, once they've got real limp and wrinkly, they won't. You won't get them back. But what you will do is the next ones when they come, they'll be healthier and stronger. And but they will, you'll have to kind of bear looking at them until it starts getting new leaves. And I have one at home I didn't bring. Um, one of my summer videos out in the patio, I remember I showed everybody. It, it uh, I don't know, it was in real bad shape. I had to cut a lot of roots off it. And after I got in the pot, all of a sudden it had four leaves. Two of them went completely yellow and fell off. And I thought, oh no, it's going to die. And I put it down in the shade because they don't want a lot of light when you're trying to get them to regrow. Right away, it grew two nice, real strong, firm leaves. So now there's four, and now it's spiky. So, but yeah, if, if you take one that seems to be suffering and you put it with too much light, that's hard on it. So it, you don't want to go in the dark, but maybe just on your counter or something. Yes? Oh, I've never had one live, so <laughs> once the flowers have died, my old man died, but if you cut the spike off, 
Are you supposed to cut it off when you're done flowering, or, or do they flower the same time? Well, uh, some people say leave them till they go brown. I cut mine off, but I cut. Um, if I wanted the plant to grow stronger for next year, I cut about two inches from the from the media okay. and above on a slant above one of the nodes. Okay. That would be about perfect. If you go lower and then put a little bit of cinnamon on that cinnamon. cup, because if yes, if you're cutting a green stem and you don't want any infection, because cinnamon will stop that. But, Yes, yes. But with the roots, now sometimes if you have a real bad root problem, some people will put cinnamon and I have tried it and I have find I totally ignore it. Don't because what cinnamon does and if you're not careful and you're using it on the root system, it will actually dehydrate all your roots. Oh. So you have to be very careful when you're using it that you use it where it's needed and that's all. Very drying. Yeah, very dry, <laughs> but good. Is there anybody else who wanted to ask something? Question over here. Oh, I was wondering, do you have, um, do you get like mealy bugs or anything onto your? I've own? never had any mealy bugs. I, uh, I've had uh, some that have got skill. On wa on watering day, I water them, and then I put them on the counter to drain, and I take a paper towel, or from the dollar store you get those round makeup pads, and they cost a dollar and a quarter for a whole bunch. And I wipe the whole plant. Now, the bottom of the leaf is where mostly you'll see scale, so then I always wipe, and I always look underneath to see if there is scale, and you would see a little brown spot. And uh, then you just wipe it off with that. And I, I don't use anything uh, other than water to wipe them, unless sometimes I, I had an orchid that came with a lot of holes. It looks like they killed something. And I used a little rubbing alcohol on a pad and wiped it real good anyway, in case they didn't. But I think in the store they did uh, kill something. And uh, yeah, pick your orchids up. Ask them when they're getting them in if you want one, and pick them up that day. <laughs> because most of those people, they don't know. Actually, now would be a good time to go to Savon. We know they'll be a week old. Well, it's Saturday, a week, uh, right? well, it's two weeks. There's not much left. I no, saw when they week. came in, and I didn't get one. I went back a few days later, and they oh, they're really? gone. Yeah, yeah. And, and top of the hill. Oh, I don't know what they're doing to theirs, but it's oh, I nobody. <laughs> I haven't looked at it. What's the top of the hill? Nikos? Uh, Askew is at the top of the hill. Oh, oh. There's our in rough shape. But when you look at them, you look in the root system. Yeah, I, okay, I go shopping. I said on my, on, on my channel, I said, um, you know, dig down. Look and see what's in there. How do those roots look? <laughs> Yes. If you see rot, forget it. I went to a grad sale one time and the lady had this whole box of she said orchids and, and they were all dead. Like no green. They They're all dead. She was oh. waiting for them to <laughs> No, once there's no green. Then there's no hope. What about the patio? Patty, no questions. Are there, are there any further questions, or should we let Carolyn wind it up? <laughs> Just one more question. Okay. How old is that big, beautiful white one you have? This one I got, um, Jack ate the pot, what was it, a month ago? A couple months ago. It must be a couple months ago. So. It still has the blooms that came on it, but it did not like that pouring rain when I ran it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and this is in, just in bark. No, they did not fall. Where do you they get all your orchids? Various places? Like I know Savon, local You know, when I first started, Safeway. 
Yeah. Safeway had the most beautiful orchids, and they looked after them. But uh, are they from BC then? Do you know where they're from? Yeah, I read all these, and I always look up the greenhouse where it came yeah, from, okay. and don't trust the, the instructions. I showed one on my site one time. It was one I got at top of the hill, and it said to water less in the summer than the winter. Well, oh, makes that. Sense. I held it up. I, uh, <laughs> can you believe it? <laughs> Costco sells them as well. Uh, yeah, so, but we don't but go out of town. So, oh, okay. Yeah, we just yeah. shop yeah. We have my mom living with us, and she's 94, and we do leave her alone. And she's looking after Maggie. If you watch the videos, Maggie kind of steals, but she look, Mom's looking after Maggie. Maggie's looking after her. <laughs> Is that your dog? Yeah. 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 I, I think you piqued everybody's interest. Yes. Yes. Uh, everybody's going to race out now. Bye. <laughs> Me too. I'm going to bring mine back to hell. <laughs> anyway, we just love that you were able to come here, share your passion. Um, and you know she is on YouTube. Yes. Can you, can you give us your YouTube address? To, or it, it's in the very back, and my photo album has okay. some little papers in the back. If you want to take one, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> and on behalf of the Garden Club, we'd like to give oh. you a little thank you. And thank you. And I guess we